If I had started my UX design journey in 2024, this is exactly what I would do. In this video, I'm going to share everything. Everything that a person who doesn't even know what UX design is can do to master the skills. I've tried my best to answer all the questions that a beginner designer has in their minds. That is, are there any free courses on the internet? Which design tool should I learn? How should I build my portfolio? Where to get clients? What are some of the best platforms to get them? Once I get a client, how will I negotiate the price? This video will cover everything. And yes, at the end, there are some bonus tips that will serve you well in your journey. So without wasting any time, let's get started with the video. The most important thing to answer is why UI UX design? Well, hear me out. The UX design industry is rapidly growing field with companies across industries recognizing the importance of user-friendly products. Companies know that it's not enough to build a mobile app or a website which just does the job. Sure, functionality is the most important thing, but it's 2024. Technology has advanced in every product out there does the job. The way to stand out is to redefine how well the product does the job. This is absolutely essential to grow their business. And design can play a big role here. They need great UX design if they want the users to spend longer on their platform and to purchase their goods or services. Plus, the money is great in this industry. As per Ambition Box, here in India, the average salary of a UX designer is around 10 lakh per annum, which comes down to 83,000 rupees per month. And then there is free freelancing, which can offer you way more than that. Basically, my point is, you don't need to worry about money in design industry once you become a skilled designer. I'll tell you how to do that in this video, so you make sure that you watch this video till the end. So basically, that's why you should be getting into UX design. Now, to start your journey, first, you need to learn the basics of UI UX. And by that, I mean you will need to develop a strong design foundation. I prefer you start with understanding the different elements of UX design like research, wireframing, prototyping. You also need to learn design principles and terminologies. I've made an in-depth video about this where I share 10 UX laws, terms and principles that you must know. Then there's a website called designsystems.com which explains the different components of design systems such as style guides, component libraries and documentation. I've talked about more such resources in my UI UX roadmap videos, all these resources are free to use, but they don't offer you a specific structure to follow. For this part, students prefer paid courses, but most of them require you to pay a fee for the course access. The courses are great, but as a beginner, we may not have the money to buy such courses. So with a little research, I found two UX design courses on the internet that are absolutely free of cost. And yes, they come with a certificate too. First course is by Great Learning Academy. The course starts with a brief introduction of UI UX and teaches you the overall process involved in UX with the wireframing and prototyping tutorials. It'll take you approximately one and a half hours to complete complete this free UI UX course along with its assessment. The second course is by Accenture hosted on the future learning platform. The course discovers the fundamentals of UX, the basics of visual design and also the tools that you need to become a UX designer. I have talked more about these two courses in my free design courses video so go check that out. Alright, once you've learned the basics of UX design, you need to learn a design tool to implement the knowledge and try out what you have learned. Speaking of the design tools, there are many in the market but the one that I recommend and use by most of the designers is Figma. Figma works seamlessly on any device with a web browser, be it Windows, Mac, or even Linux. This flexibility makes it accessible to a wide range of designers and teams. Now, how to learn this tool? Well, Figma has its own playlist on their YouTube channel, which has just six videos explaining what the tool is and how you can use Figma. This playlist takes you on a quick tour of key features through a rough approximation of the design process where you design a mobile app together. Then you can check out this playlist where you dive into Figma features and learn how to speed up your design workflow. Figma has another playlist about auto layouts where you learn to create fluid and responsive designs to save time, bring designers closer to technologies like Flexbox. The tutorial will guide you through the process from a blank canvas to a completed component. Once you gain hands-on experience with Figma, you can explore other auxiliary design tools such as Protopie for high-fidelity prototyping and Adobe After Effects for motion design. You see, the more tools you're proficient with, the more versatile you become as a designer. I made a video about these tools, which you can check out to better understand them. But remember that these auxiliary design tools are not must-have skills to start with as such. So 
make sure you're fully comfortable with Figma before getting onto anything else. Otherwise, you may end up learning none of them properly. Now you've learned the tools and the skills. So what next? Reaching out to clients? Nope. First, you need to put your learnings into practice. Start with passion projects to hone your skills. Redesign existing websites or apps for free, showcasing your creativity and problem-solving abilities. And don't forget to show off your work online. Platforms like Medium, Behance, and Dribbble are excellent for sharing your designs and insights. Creating before and after comparison and video breakdowns of your works can give you a real edge. This not only showcases your design skills, but also demonstrates your thought process. Now, building a strong portfolio is essential for landing a UI UX design job. Include your best work. In this regard, remember that showing the end states or the screens of your work is not enough. By seeing the screens alone, I as a recruiter wouldn't know if you'll be able to design if I give you a new problem statement. So it's very important to tell why you have taken decision on that design because that shows how well you can think. And if you are structured in your thinking, you should be able to solve any new problem that I give you. So present your work as case studies, which not only shows the screens of your design, but also explains why they are made that way. For a beginner, I usually recommend two to three case studies, but finally, it's not about the number of case studies that you have. It's about the quality of them. There's no point in having five case studies if none of them are good. I had created a mock application called Split App as my case study, which actually got me my first job. But you know what? The same thing wouldn't have got me a job in 2024 because I had made a lot of mistakes in the past and the industry has evolved in 2024. Now, what was that? I'm not going to talk about it because I've already done that in a video of mine. Basically, case studies provide a deep dive into your design thinking, which potential employers love to see in your portfolio. For more insights related to building your portfolio, you can check out this video where I have shared some insights which will be really helpful to you. All right, you've worked on dummy projects and you build your portfolio. The next question comes is where to get your first client or where to apply for your first design job. But before that, you need to answer what kind of job you want for yourself. Are you looking for a remote or on-site opportunities? Do you want to work with startups or established companies? Or will you work full-time or part-time? Once you're clear about the type of job that you're looking for, it'll be very easy for you to choose the right platform to start. For example, if you want to work for startups, you can check out wellfound.com. It was previously called angellist.com. You might have heard about it. Here, you get to see VC-backed startups who need interns or employees for their office operations. On Wellfound's website, you'll have to create a profile and sign in. Simply select the Jobs tab and search for UX designer in the job title. You can apply preferred filters and click on the view results. Now, choose the job and click on learn more. And after filling your information, you can simply apply. It's as simple as that. Similarly, if you're looking for free freelance gigs, you should go and create your profiles on platforms like Upwork and Fiverr. Showcase specific UX design services like wireframing, prototyping, or usability testing. You know, the stuff which usually clients want to hire you for. Use clear titles, compelling descriptions, and attractive visuals to capture clients' attention. Once you've created your profile, I want you to visit their job search page and enter UI UX designer or relevant title in the job search bar to get the desired result. Choose the result that compel you and apply for the same. As a freelancer, the flexibility of working hours and continuous learning opportunities make the design field even more attractive. If you want to know some of the websites where you get high paying design jobs, you can check out this video of mine where I have talked about these websites in detail. All right, I'm assuming now that you've got your first client after doing everything that I said. Now, as a beginner, one of the most critical aspect is setting your rates. You must strike a right balance between competitive pricing and valuing your skills. Research the market rates to ensure you are not over charging on underpricing. You know, it's very easy to do that with internet at our fingertips. Just go and search for a typical rate and you would get to see some average values. But don't stop there. Keep searching more. Keep speaking to more people. And then you will get an idea about how much someone at your level of understanding and knowledge should be charging. It's also okay to adjust your rates as you gain experience. But make sure your negotiation skills are up to the mark. I'm saying this because 58% of the people are terrible at negotiating salaries. Just make sure that you're not one of them. And let me tell you, negotiating is not any rocket science. You just have to keep a few things in mind while doing so. For example, express your gratitude for the job offer and after analyzing it thoroughly, provide a detailed rationale for employer's concerns. Make sure you're using a polite but assertive approach when you ask if the offer can be improved. And try to conclude the negotiation with a question to keep the conversation open. For more such tips and tricks to secure that ideal salary, you can watch this video of mine on salary negotiation. I've also created a reel around this topic where I shared 
four negotiation tips to help you secure better deals. But to get your first project, you need to do what others aren't doing so that you get noticed. Remember, you might even offer to work for free for a small task if you're truly passionate about working with a specific company and want to prove your skills to them first. Also, when you're reaching out to potential clients, you can offer to redesign one of their existing experiences which you can attach in your cold email. This initiative will tell the recruiter that you're eager to contribute rather than simply waiting for a job. Even after landing your first client or job, it's crucial to be updated and get better as a designer because that's the only way to move forward. So here are my three bonus tips on how you can do that. First tip is to learn design trends. It's because these trends help you to make your designs more visually appealing, engaging and user-friendly. 3D design, minimalism and bento box are such trends that you will see gaining popularity in 2024. Basically, these design trends are the fusion of depth and simplicity which is evident in the work of companies like Apple. I've discussed about that and many other trends in this video of mine. Please check it out to know the upcoming trends of 2024. Other than the video, I've also created a YouTube short talking about the upcoming trends. My second tip is to learn AI tools to make your design process more efficient. I don't need to tell you how AI is transforming UX design by providing personalized experiences, automating tasks, and offering intelligent recommendations. ChatGPT and Midjourney are already playing a pivotal role in UX design. Here are some prompts that you can try with ChatGPT to better understand user experience and other design-related tasks. Describe the ideal user interface for a travel mobile app. Suggest a color palette for a food website. Describe how to optimize the user interface of a finance mobile app or website for accessibility. What kind of user interface should best suit a dating platform. Create a list of must-have features for a user-friendly gaming app. Rewrite this UI copy to be more concise and action-oriented. Describe the typical day in the life of a 50-year-old Indian sedentary worker and highlight their pain points and needs. How would a Gen Z user react to encountering this experience? This is how ChatGPT helps you build user personas, write UI copies, and tools like Midjourney and Firefly can generate illustrations and images for your design. Figma also offers a number of AI plugins like Majestic, Ando AI, Wireframe Designer, and Fig GPT. Well, none of these are perfect today, but the rate at which AI is progressing very soon they might be close to perfect. So you make sure that you get comfortable using them. I've talked about some Figma plugins in this YouTube short. All right, that was about AI tools. Now my third tip for you to get better as a designer is to work on your communication skills. Effective communication is key, not just to working with clients, but also to increasing your chances of clearing interviews. And eventually you will work with developers, product managers, marketing, and other departments. So being able to explain your ideas clearly and collaborate it effectively is essential. In short, strong communication skills are the bridge between your design expertise and a successful user experience. They allow you to translate your vision into reality, build relationships, and ultimately create products that users love. You can watch this video by Chris Du to learn the basic elements of communication. I think it's a great video. So folks, this is how I would start as an aspiring UI UX designer in 2024. Let me tell you that this is just a framework. You can modify it as per your needs and resources. All I can say to you is to work on your craft, keep learning, learning and stay updated with the industry. And when you're working as a freelancer or an employee, always meet deadlines and communicate effectively with your clients because that will ensure that you are sustaining as an employee. So that was all from my side. All the resources that I have mentioned in the video will be there in the descriptions. Go check them out. If you're interested in my design journey, you can have a look at this video where I've talked about how I got a high paying UX design job. And if you're looking for free resources to boost your design skills, don't forget to check out this video of mine. Please like and share this video with your network and hit the subscribe button. It motivates me to create more content for you. Until next time, this is Sapta signing off.